Could virtual idols replace traditional idols? The K-pop industry is constantly trying to outdo each other by escaping K-pop's cookie-cutter mold and formula. With the access of advanced technology, these entertainment companies are using these new peculiar modern resources to stand out in the game. Hi everyone and welcome back to Midnight Theories and if you're new here, welcome to Midnight Theories. Today we will be jumping down the rabbit hole of the impact of AI technology and how it is revolutionizing K-pop and the entertainment industry for better or worse. The integration of AI technology in K-pop or the Korean entertainment industry is not something entirely brand new. One of the earliest projects was from 1998, with the virtual singer known as Adam. Adam was crafted by Adam Soft, a small tech company trying to reach the same level of success or greater of Hyori Pro's virtual talent Kyoko Date. The virtual singer's visuals were based on South Korean actor Wonbin, while the voice and movements were provided by an unknown singer at the time. Adam was made to emulate the heartthrobs of the 90s, making him fit the ideal type among South Korean teens, paired with the soulful voice that could make anyone melt and fall in love on the spot. Oh, so cute. Oh, he even had a detailed profile to spark some essence of humanity and life to make him more relatable to fans. Well, as much as you could relate to a computer-generated singer. Debuting in 1998 with his first album Genesis and his song No Love in the World, the virtual act proved to be popular amongst teens, their target demographic, and curious eyes beyond. The virtual singer appeared on Korean television, having segments fully dedicated to him and endorsement deals stacked upon each other, including a fashion campaign in Soda CF reflecting his growing popularity. The singer released his second album Exodus the following year. Adam Soft felt comfortable in releasing a second and full album this time. After the first album sold 200,000 copies and the single No Love in the World rose up to the top 10 music charts across the nation, there are reports that the virtual singer made 500 million won in just three months. Their greed was met with a failed comeback and a dramatic drop in interest. The production costs, loss of popularity, and limitations held back the cyber idol who was now deemed unprofitable by the company. For example, it would take a budget of 100 million won, 5 to 6 developers, and anywhere from a month to a week's worth of work to get a 30 second promotion clip out. Because of his disappearance, many rumors came about. The first was he was killed by a virus, was sent to the military, or became a fashion designer. Leaving as abruptly as he came, Adam faded into obscurity. Or so we thought. There were multiple attempts to bring back the cyber celebrity. In 2003, the singer's name was trending after news of a Chinese entertainment company, Star Maker, would be debuting Adam to the Chinese market and would remake both his albums in Chinese, sung by a Chinese singer. In 2016, Adam was buzzing again when a startup company was trying to raise 500,000 won for a concert and a talk show, but they were short 50,000 won. The true face and vocals behind Adam were not revealed for almost 20 years. In 2018, on a show called Sugar Man 2, Adam was brought back to life. The real singer Park Sung Chol made his official reveal with this TV appearance. Park Sung Chol wanted to come out as a vocal talent behind Adam and start his own singing career separate from the virtual singer, but he was threatened by his manager not to. Allegedly, his manager claimed that if he were to debut, Adam would die. Although netizens and Park Sung Chol claim that his official reveal was on Sugar Man 2, I also found an article dating back to 2016 where the writer wrote a piece on Adam's background and the true identity of Adam who appeared on SBS's Midnight TV Entertainment in 2013. The singer has since made a successful career and currently resides in Japan for the past 15 years under the stage name Zero. He also runs a YouTube channel under the name Adam and Zero TV. Adam's existence became a pioneer and model for South Korea's future virtual influencers and singers alike. Due to his success in South Korea, Kyoko Date also branched into the Korean market and other virtual singers followed after, such as Saida and Lucia, but the market was not ready. In 2011, after technology had some time to develop, South Korea had their first Vocaloid known as Siyu. Unlike Adam, Saida, and Lucia who strictly used real people to provide their vocals, Siyu was different. Although some of her vocals were provided by Glam Stahi after her company teamed up with Big Hit Entertainment, CU primarily used the vocal synthesizer software. 
During CU's rise in popularity and with the help of Big Hit, her demo was produced by Hitman Bang and performed with Glam on Inky Gaeom, but also at the 2012 Gaio Dejun. Vocaloids have been popularized by Hatsune Miku and continue to be successful in their own market. This was only the beginning for this tech to be used in K-pop. There would be major development on the horizon. A significant upgrade from Adam and a huge time leap in between, the gaming and K-pop community were presented with the beautiful and fierce ladies of KDA. KDA was a collaborative group by Riot Games, singer Jariah Burns, Madison Beer, and the girls of G-Idol, Soyan and Mion. The four singers provided the vocal talents to the four characters of League of Legends. In preparation for the group, the girls had to learn the actual choreo because the characters' movements would be modeled after them. They would wear motion capture suits to capture every detailed movement for the animation. The group debuted at the 2018 League of Legends World Championship opening ceremony. The real singers sang their single Pop Stars and shared the stage with their virtual counterparts. The music video for the song was released the same day. Patrick Morales, the creative lead behind Pop Stars' music video, said he wanted KDA to exist somewhere between fantasy and reality. Their debut single reached number one on both the K pop iTunes charts and the Billboard World's digital song sales. Because of their surge in popularity, fans wanted to know what was next for the group. This led Riot to release an EP consisting of five songs and more in game skins. The group would then release their song More and a concept video for their song Villain and participated in a handful of interviews as their virtual counterparts. KDA has proven to be a successful model for the future cyber celebrities to come. During one of SM's many AI and hologram ventures, news of SM Entertainment debuting a new girl group after six years became a hot topic. Not only were they debuting a new girl group since Red Velvet, but it turns out this group would include virtual members. The public were confused and didn't know what to make of this and how big of a role these fictional members would play. At the 2020 World Cultural Industry Forum, founder Lee Soo Min gave a clear explanation and plan for the group. We are in the era of the next industrial revolution. As technology advances in the future, more changes will occur in human lifestyles. And as we have said, the future world will be celebrities and robots. It will be the world of the future. I have mentioned SMCU in the vision, which is the basic value of the world of entertainment in the future, but I will soon open the start of entertainment in the future. We will showcase a new girl group, ESPA, for the future SMCU project. ESPA will project a future world centered on celebrities and avatars and will be born into a group of completely new and innovative concepts that transcend the boundaries between the real world and the virtual world. When ESPA is released to the world, their music and lyrics will experience new entertainment through all IP. Visuals, performances, including video content including music videos, as well as fascinating stories. ESPA finally graced their screens debuting on November 17, 2020. There was a divide mainly to do with the presence of the AI members and the real members. The people who were excited to see all eight members coexist in the music video were met with disappointment when the virtual members made only a few seconds appearance for an almost four minute video. Others were relieved that the virtual counterparts did not take the spotlight away from the actual members. Espa has released two more music videos since their debut, with the release of their songs Forever and Next Level. While SM has given their avatars a sprinkle of spotlight, they have not taken full advantage of these AI models and keep them scattered in between scenes for the time being, still testing the waters by listening to the public's reaction. Espa is not SM's first venture into creating virtual counterparts of their artists and it is definitely not their last. In 2013, SM partnered with The Illusion Inc. to set up a virtual concert for Girls' Generation. The life-size holograms performed on stage showcasing the capabilities of the new technology. This experience is said to be as if the members of Girls' Generation are actually performing in front of you. With virtual concerts, SM is said to give the ability to have their groups perform all over the world simultaneously. Years later, the two companies partnered up again to work on SM Town's hologram theater. The Illusion saw this opportunity to develop the technique further. With this development, in 2015, SM created their take of The Wizard of Oz with their hologram musical, School of Oz, that included not only the artists, but holograms and special effects to add a more magical touch to the experience. Unlike the two previous acts I mentioned earlier, Eternity is a new 11-member virtual project group entirely composed of AI members under Pulse9. Pulse9 is not a music company, but rather an AI technology-based company founded by CEO Jian Jenny Park in 2016. The company is using Eternity to research and improve base-providing technology and showcasing the capabilities of AI technology. 
The group debuted on March 22, 2021, officially making their debut with their title track, I'm Real. The production of the song and music video was a downgrade to the progress of AI technology used in K-pop. According to Pulse9, their technology is high in realism, low in cost, and requires a shorter production time. Their tech allows the girls to mimic human facial expression through the manipulation of everything from their gazes, facial angles, and the turns of the corner of their mouths. The company further emphasizes that deep real is more than a deep fake. In addition, because it is not a synthesis of the face of a real person, but a new design of a virtual person, it is different from the existing deep fake, and the result is more sophisticated. For a technology company that prided itself on its skill in production, it was far from the quality they boasted. That was until the company started posting individual interviews with the members. The dramatic and greatly improved quality amazed onlookers and fans. The AI models were almost indistinguishable from a real person. According to the company, none of the AI members are based on real people. The members of Eternity were selected by an online event called the AI Shimkong Challenge, also known as the AI Heartthrob Challenge, where a total of 101 male and female virtual characters were up against each other. Now, I'm not gonna lie, there was a portion of the public who were not happy with the group and thought the idea of an all-AI girl group was unsettling and teeters towards the uncanny valley effect. Uncanny valley is a term used to describe the relationship between the human-like appearance of a robotic object and the emotional response it evokes. In this phenomenon, people feel a sense of unease and even revulsion in response to humanoid robots that are highly realistic. The term was first coined by Japanese roboticist Masahiro Mori in an article published in 1970. There is a divide on whether the uncanny valley theory exists, but you can't deny the ominous dead eyes and lack of human connection these humanoids bring forth. Now, let's weigh in the pros and cons. There are advantages to producing virtual idols. First is the expenses. The cost of training an idol is almost astronomical, especially if you have to pay back the company for breaching your contract or your group is not successful. In a 2014 article written by the media outlet K-Pop Stars, they report the total of living expenses and training expenses for five idols or about to debut idols for six months is around 240,000 USD. Most idols train for upwards of two years. In addition to the living and training expenses, releasing an album costs anywhere from an estimated 215000 to 430000 For an idol group with 10 members, which would mean several millions of dollars would be invested even before the group debuts. If a group debuts and isn't able to get any broadcast or is not successful, it would be disastrous for both small and large entertainment companies. The second advantage would be no human restriction. Like SM founder Lee Seung-min touched on, he expressed that having the advantage of having virtual or hologram singers or counterparts to already existing idols, they can reach a broader audience and be at multiple places at the same time. They can hold concerts all over the world with the same act simultaneously without having human limitations, such as sleeping, dieting, aging, and exhaustion. They can hold multiple events such as photo shoots, interviews, virtual fan meets, and concerts without overworking an idol or group and can be run 24-7. The third advantage would be the AIs would be scandal-free. Idols are firstly seen as products or investments by their companies. They must already give up a piece of their humanity to look and act perfect at all times. Even one little hiccup can destroy their career if they aren't careful. Kwok kyum a professor of psychology at Seoul National University said, Virtual characters will be able to do whatever we wish and even expand our creative possibilities because they are able to do things that we can't. But because they are fictional characters, we can't hold them liable for their actions. For instance, if a character does something immoral or illegal, then it's difficult to hold them responsible for it because holding them to human standards would be a fuzzy area. Both outcomes are possible depending on which direction we go in. With virtual idols, these companies can rest easy knowing they can't get into scandals themselves. Or can they? With this technology being more accessible in arm's reach with the simple use of an app these days, there is a rising concern for not only K-pop idols or celebrities, but just about anyone. According to Wikipedia, deepfakes are synthetic media in which a person in an existing image or video is replaced with someone else's likeness. While the act of faking content is not new, deepfakes leverage powerful techniques from machine learning and artificial intelligence to manipulate or generate visual and audio content with the high potential to deceive. 
For example, Big Bang's top was in heat for sharing a fan edited deep fake on his Instagram. The singer's face was placed over the faces of his label mate Blackpink for their How You Like That music video. Korean netizens left comments under his post showing their distaste. Multiple users said, What are you doing to Blackpink? It's a problematic technology and it is really disgusting to see. It's creepy. Foreign fans stopped using deep fake. What is this? I can't believe he posted it himself. The rise of deepfakes has taken over the media. This technology is being used to create anywhere from their favorite celebrities participating in TikTok trends all the way to weaponizing the tech to produce adult content. While doing research for this video, I came across tutorials and step-by-step -step guides on how to easily produce this content with the single use of an app. And I've seen even children promoting these apps to their followers and a wider audience the more viral their videos become. As technology continues to advance, this dangerous program has become more accessible. In an article written by E.J. Dixon on the Rolling Stones, a case study showed that 90% of this technology is used to create non-consensual adult content using the likeness of celebrities and 25% of it targets South Korean descent and are classified by the researchers as South Korean musicians or K-pop singers. The researchers chose not to name the individuals most often targeted by deep fakes out of concern for their privacy. Leading up to Espa's debut, fans and netizens alike showed concern for the young singers and their avatars for two major reasons. The first concern was how SM would protect these young girls and their avatars modeled after them. We just discussed that deepfakes are an increasing issue, especially targeting female idols. But in Espa's case, the avatar factor plays a huge issue legally. Professor, what if I get hacked? Currently, the law only protects people. Which begs the question, if the avatars ever become victims of this sort of crime, what happens? Lawyer Kwon Dun stated, Since avatars such as A. Karina, A. Winter, A. Giselle, and A. Ningning are not human, they do not meet the requirements. Therefore, it is difficult to punish them under the revised law on sexual violence against deep fake sex crimes. However, the actual members who have become models of the avatars can passively be protected. In the case of threatening a member who is a real person with avatar deep faking filming, it can be a crime of intimidation under criminal law. But if direct actions against the victim are not linked, it will be difficult to file a crime. Civil lawsuits such as requesting alimony for mental damage are possible. Lawyer Kang Jin Sook added, Avatar members are unlikely to be victims of the punishment law, but the above criminal act can be seen as direct towards the actual model, so we can judge whether the crime is committed or not based on this. SM commented on the concern, Since it is a new concept group and teasing stage ahead of our debut, we cannot disclose the details. However, we will take corresponding legal action not only to undermine the honor and rights of the actual members, but also to the extent that they are consumed in the wrong form, such as unauthorized use of Avatar members. The second concern was, the real-life idols would be more vulnerable to unfair comparison and further objectification. The avatars are designed with an unrealistic body, dressed in revealing clothing, and are ageless. They can also execute a flawless performance. All of this could pile onto the artist's mental health and affect them severely. The avatars of Espa have also been heavily compared to KDA's design as well. Bringing up yet another one of Isuman's grand ideas to create his own future entertainment business practices into reality, there was news that SM was closing down their SM Town building due to financial losses and replacing it with a bigger and better facility. In this new huge building, they'd offer what they call an interactive Hallyu studio. Here, fans will be able to experience the reality of K-pop music, recording, makeup, filming, and more. But what raised eyebrows by the public was one of the features discussed. The top floors of the building will be used as a 25-room boutique virtual reality hotel, themed to give fans the experience of staying in the same space as their favorite idols. E said, AI technology will enable customized avatars to fit into people's lives and people will coexist with their avatars by living together. Some could see it as good marketing, but it raised flags for many netizens, bringing in the concern of breaking the boundaries between idols and fans, blurring the lines between reality and illusion. Look boys, our one true love is finally here. Let's be the ideal boyfriends and give her our utmost attention. What? Attention! To quote an article by Study Break, a bond with an AI version of a real person warps an already strenuous dynamic between celebrities and superfans. Breaking the barriers is dangerous, especially if the technology falls into the hands of an obsessive fan. Which brings me to the Mido app. 
In 2015, an app called Mida was developed to make fans feel closer to their idols by virtually chatting with their favorite celebrities. The only catch is that you're really just messaging back and forth with an AI system. The app was made with good intentions, but in the wrong hands, it could be damaging. There was also rumors about this app's AI system sending creepy messages and spying on the user. But to learn more about this app, I suggest you watch my video where I cover the topic in depth. Is this the future of K-pop and the entertainment industry? The cyber celebrity era is just beginning, but I think it's safe to say that these virtual idols will not transcend traditional idols, but they could flourish within their own smaller communities, such as Vocaloids have. I think E. Yutag of Pop Music and Media Studies at George Mason University, Korea said it best. An important aspect of K-pop is human interaction. Fans feed off of the individual personalities of stars, and it is not likely that they will be able to engage deep enough in avatars to become ardent fans. The idea of having avatars will probably benefit the group by attracting a lot of attention prior to their debut. But just as EXO gained popularity because of who they are as people and not because of the band's superpower concept, what are your thoughts on AI technology and virtual celebrities finding their way into the K-pop industry or any topic I mentioned in this video? I personally think it'd be interesting to see the cost comparison between an AI group versus a real group. Let me know what you think and all your thoughts in the comments down below. I understand now why I was called here. But don't worry, I haven't failed and I won't fail. And as always, thank you for watching and enjoy your stay.